right off the bat, I thought, you know, we need IMAX on board. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we started working that. And so that's been, you know, with me as long as we've been training for the mission. You know, long the time in the time. making, yeah. And so I'm still sort of reflecting on, <laughs> you know, did we really achieve everything? And, uh, you know, thinking about it overnight, one of the perspectives that I have is that Are we the, good? Uh, okay, sorry. I'm sorry, I didn't mean sure. to interrupt you. We're just there. Uh, you know, the movie Dream, Dream is Alive was huge for so many people and, yes. and inspirational. And so I'm kind of thinking, you know, is this, uh, is this movie going to play that role for a new generation of kids? And I think it has that potential. I'm very excited by that. I think it really has that potential. There's so much that you, uh, you learn from this, but here, I'll let you... Uh, i got to silence it. Yeah, no, no I problem. I know. I, nice I had to make sure mine Please was done. Take that over by the Diet Coke or something <laughs> like that. Thanks. Okay. Um, I heard somebody's go off just now, and so I was thinking, that. Eh. you got to remember, yeah. Well, you know, they may be calling you for another mission, and, you know, we want to get the interview done first, and then you can go. Uh, I'm well, in trouble. i got to go. <laughs> um, well, I want to ask you, first of all, I mean, when, when you were, you know, you, you know that you're going up to space. You know that you have to accomplish what you have to accomplish in terms of the Hubble, but then yet... The other side of it is you're making this film, and you've got to bring these cameras on board, and it's an added pressure, I would think. What is going through your mind? You, like, you don't have enough to worry about. Well, I think if you go outside, uh, you know, we happen to be in Washington, D.C. now, and look at everybody snapping away and taking little movies with their, their cameras. Yeah. I mean, part of the human experience is, you know, we like to capture and share our experiences. And in spaceflight, it's exactly the same. You know, it's always a very high cadence, you know, our number one job is, you know, to go up and do this Hubble complete makeover. Um, but as humans, you know, we also want to capture the, the special moments with each other, yeah. you know, the wonderful views of Earth, uh, the spacewalks, all of these kind of things. And so the filmmaking was somewhat incidental to that. You know, we thought we are going to capture all these special moments and then it's up to Tony Myers and her team as the director to craft it into the story because we knew all the elements of the story would be there. That said, we did have some requirements, and we had eight minutes of film with this very special IMAX camera in the payload bay. You know, that pressure uh, was on top of just succeeding on Hubble, and and so that was a little bit of a different thing. But we spent time talking about, you know, is this the right moment? Is this the right lighting, lens, focus? Uh, that wouldn't have been on a normal mission if we weren't making a film. Yeah. Tell me about a little bit about the bonding with your crew. Um, you know, you're going up, you, you know these people, but you're in a tight little space up there, you know? T how do you guys know it's going to work between you? Because that's probably one of the most important things, I would think. Well, one of the benefits of having a very complex, very difficult mission is that you spend years with your crewmates. Uh, you know, this was my fifth mission, so I've seen yeah. five different crews, although I flew with Scott Altman and Mike Massimino before, so I knew these guys. Uh, I, I would say, without a doubt, we were the closest bunch that I've flown with. I mean, it was really an incredible crew. One of the reasons why I think people perform at very high levels in situations where it's cramped, it can be uncomfortable, you know, it's, it's an extreme environment, is a common sense of purpose. You know, and, and for NASA, and specifically for these Hubble Space Telescope missions, you know, on the crew, the folks on the ground, the IMAX team, everybody, you know, we have such a shared vision of what we need to achieve uh, that everybody rises above you know some of the normal kind of petty you know human interaction things that might you know cause a problem uh, and would be the source of a new sitcom you know, <laughs> that that generally doesn't happen on, on a mission like the Hubble and didn't happen for us I yeah. mean we were you know we were just clicking like clockwork yeah um, sorry oh sure sure yeah. <laughs> Boy, microphones are the biggest problem in space. Yeah. Yeah. Real big challenge. Everyone rustling against everything. As you float. Well, it's, you know, the, the microphones on the cameras are really no good because they're too wide. Yeah. Uh, we, right, so we had some uh, yeah, some good good ones, but then the cables were too long, so they were in the view. Well, and well let's, talk, let's talk a little bit about that. Let's talk about the, uh, the added pressures, the added challenges of having the cameras up there, <coughs> knowing that you, you, know, you had to bring back this footage and everything, but what, what, did it, you know, what did you guys have to face that really you know, either ticked you off or like, oh my God, how am I going to deal with this? When we first started you know, framing how we were going to operate the in-camera uh, Canon camcorders, high-definition camcorders, wonderful cameras, uh, and 
manage that with the timelines and the outside camera and everything, it seems like it'll be easy because we're going to take movies of each other all the time anyway, just to capture the moment. And then we discovered some technical things. IMAX is shot on film, chemical emulsion. As such, the camera runs at 24 frames per second. Uh, you know, this amazing mile of film that we had on board, only eight minutes, running really fast, but in a theater it plays at 24 frames per second. Normal video is shot now at 30 frames per second, and it looks different. And so for IMAX, we had to shoot, you know, this is a technical thing, at 24 frames, and then for the NASA TV and all of this, they wanted 30 frames per second. Well, it actually takes a fair number of little button pushes and going to menus and changing configurations in the camera. And so we had to decide, is this an IMAX moment or is this a NASA moment? Right. Uh, and in the end, our real mission was to service the Hubble to come back safely and all these you know, really high level things. Um, and we said, okay, we're gonna you know, just shoot what we need to shoot. We'll try and do our best. We had one camera set one way, one the other. Uh, I think the uh, IMAX folks were able to use both footage mm -hmm. and so it worked out great. But that was a source of tension. Yeah. It made it a little bit hard. There are the little details in space you don't worry about. Uh, cables, you know, the microphones were at the end of a long cable, 25 feet, I think. And, and so on the ground, that's no big deal. You know, you tuck it somewhere and it's, or it sits on a tabletop. Um, but space, of course, that floats up and becomes, you know, this tangled mess of wire, which just doesn't look good in a shot. And plus, you can get caught in it, and, it, you know, the space isn't that big in the space shuttle. So, so we had to work out, you know, where to put the mics and how to tuck the cables out so they weren't, you know, seen in the, in the film. And, and, of course, we didn't have key grips and, you know, all kinds of staffs and other people working this. It was just us. At the same time, we're trying to execute spacewalks and do critical burns and all that, grab the Hubble, all this kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, so it was pretty busy. Yeah, but it, I, but yeah. the end result, I'm very pleased the with. The end result is, is phenomenal. Like I was saying earlier, it just feels like we're up there because none of us are going to get the opportunity that you get. You know, are you pleased or do you get that feeling that you've gone back up when you watch the film? The ultimate goal of any big space film is to give the audience the feeling that they're up there you know, doing what we were doing, and this film achieves that. Do you still kind of pinch yourself at what you do for a living? Every day. Every day. I mean, it's just remarkable that people are able to, to survive in space, that we were clever enough to build the tools, the space shuttle, you know, the rockets, uh, to be able to do that. And, and we're just scratching the surface. I mean, we've only been doing space flight for about 50 years. You know, imagine what people will be doing 100 years from now. Just phenomenal. It is phenomenal. You know, you can only prepare so much for every mission, for whatever you do, and inevitably, you know, things could go wrong up there. And we, as we saw in the film, there were things, you know, unforeseen things that happened that, you know, you couldn't pull off, um, you know, a latch. And you know, how how do you guys train your minds to like, okay, be calm? You know, how do you get through stuff like that? That's a really interesting question. Pre-flight, before we launch, you know, for years, I spend enormous amounts of time, you know, studying what, you know, the process of how do we repair this instrument, you know, how are we going to, you know, take this particular cover plate off, uh, you know, how does this latch work, trying to understand everything in great detail. And as part of that, I, I look at a latch, for instance, and I say, okay, this is how it's supposed to work. You know, what happens if, you know, this bolt doesn't turn properly? What are we going to do? And we actually document all of that, and there's a big team of people who spend years thinking about what could go wrong. So in flight, we've already thought about it, and we have an answer. But Walking out to the launch pad, I think we've all prepared so well. Uh, we are ready to go do this. And anything that goes wrong, you know, we know the answer. Uh, or at least we have, you know, the, the thought, the thinking process of how to solve the problems on orbit. Mm. I never anticipated on this mission that we would have so many problems, one after another after another. Uh, but fortunately, we were prepared for almost all of it, plus yeah. the folks on the ground supported us when Mike Messamino had to break off the handrail after he stripped a bolt. So, well, uh, Thank goodness it all worked out. I'm sorry our time is running out, okay. but it's been just an honor and pleasure to meet you. And, Bonnie, my uh, pleasure. Great talking to you, and good luck with all this. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much. That's great. Thank you.